Hi, my name is Arnith and I'm going to be a junior at IA West. Hi, my name is Abhishek and I'm also going to be a junior at IA West next year. Today, we're going to talk about our biomedical innovation, nanotechnology. So let's dive in and see how nanotechnology can revamp the medical system we know to this day. Yeah, but we should let our animated versions do the rest of the presentation because you know, Corona and all. Mm -hmm, that's a good idea. Okay, let's get right into it. Medicine has advanced tremendously throughout time. We've reached the point at which we're able to treat numerous types of sicknesses that were not curable in the past. For example, malaria. Around 140 years ago, it took a major toll on us, almost killing half of the human population. Today, with new drugs and prevention techniques, the number of cases has drastically decreased. But still, there are many issues that need solving. So is there something that can come to aid and help us in the medical field? Well, yes. There is new tech that can bring the forefront of medicine and engineering together, and that is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology, or nanotech for short, is exactly what it sounds like, smaller sized tech. More specifically, atom-sized robots that can be programmed to do almost any task. Nanotechnology is already pre-existing, but it has not been fully developed and implemented in the medical field. It is currently being tested for uses in oil spills. In an article by ASTAR, or the Agency for Science, Technology, and Research, it is seen that researchers have been able to cleanse oil-affected waters in their labs using nanobots. From their research, we can learn that by using each nanobot as a minuscule vessel, oil and any other substance can be quickly extracted from water. We know that this feature and many more can play to our advantage when implementing nanotechnology in medicine. As we said before, we plan to implement nanotechnology to help the medical field in many ways. Firstly, we plan to use nanotech in helping us identify foreign bodies in patients. Injecting patients with pre-programmed nanobots can help find parasites, toxins, viruses, and anything out of the ordinary that is not normally in the human body. Okay, so say hello to Bill. Let's say Bill has been bitten by a cobra. It takes a cobra's venom around 30 minutes to kill an adult human. Now getting an antivenom may be a solution, but nanobots in the bloodstream can quickly target the venom and extract it from Bill's blood. Now, identification is not just limited to this. Nanobots can spot cancer cells way before a patient has even been diagnosed. It is said by ECHA, the European Chemicals Agency, that a major key in fighting cancer is early detection. This already gives an upper hand to the doctor for their job of curing the patient. Let's say that the nanobots inside Bill have now detected a few cancer cells. Well. Now the nanobots in his body can be programmed to fix the DNA of the malfunctioning cells, allowing them to return to normal function. But what if a patient has not had nanotech injected and has already been diagnosed with cancer long before? Well, this takes us to the second use of nanotech, treatment. Any patient with some type of sickness can really be helped with nanotech. From a minor cold all the way to cancer, they can all be cured with nanotechnology. Say Bill did not have nanobots in him and found out at a later stage that he had cancer. Well then, nanotech could be injected and still save his life. Bill's tumor spread because of the cancer, and because of nanobots, this could be stopped and even eradicated. The nanobots inside him could build a barrier and stop blood flow to the cancer cells, causing them to die. This in turn would get rid of the tumor. Nanobots could also conduct the same chemotherapy that is done normally, but they can do it much more effectively. The same use of nanobots could be used for the flu as well. Now see, Bill is very unlucky and is now coming down with the flu. But don't worry, the nanotech inside of him can also carry antiviral agents to counteract against this virus. So at the end of the day, Bill is still living and nanotech helps us again. So now we've seen that nanotech can be used for detecting and treating. But that's not even the full capability of it. We plan to have nanotech used through the IoT. Now you may be asking what the IoT is. Well, IBM states that the IoT, or the Internet of Things, is the concept of connecting any device to the Internet and to other connected devices. The IoT is a giant network of connected things and people, all of which collect and share data with each other. Adding nanotech to this concept can really revolutionize the medical field. But how will this happen? Well, we thought that connecting an app to the nanobots in the patient's bodies through the IoT could really help both the doctor and the patient. The new innovation would help change the lives of many people across the world. People could just get one injection of nanobots and they would be set for a lifetime of medical needs. Due to the fact that the nanobots can be controlled remotely, those who cannot travel to a hospital can still receive health care. In all, this will be a much more efficient way to check up on patients and treat them. According to some statistics, it takes most Americans an average of 18 days to schedule a doctor's appointment. With this technology, there will be no longer a wait time because of the hassles involved in scheduling and insurances. The app has many pros as well. Whenever the nanobots inside you identify something, they notify you and your doctor. 
This way, the whole idea of being too late is non-existent. The doctor can always have whereabouts of your vitals, and so can you. Your annual checkups won't be needed anymore since things like blood pressure and sugar level can all be seen from home. The app, along with your doctor's help, can both guide you for a healthier lifestyle. The app connected to nanotech can also help us currently with COVID. With the pandemic going on, many patients cannot see their doctors due to the fear of contracting the disease when visiting the hospitals. But with nanotech, doctors can keep an eye on their patients while practicing social distancing. In terms of COVID itself, nanotech can be pretty useful. Let's look again at Bill. Bill is deciding to be unsafe and go out during the pandemic. He knows he has a chance of getting COVID and might need to get tested for it. Now currently, COVID can only be identified by a nasal swab test and the results of which only come back several days after taking it. The nasal swab test basically looks for antibodies that are released when the body is combating a virus. But Bill is lucky this time and does not need to use a nasal swab kit to check for the virus. The nanobots in his bloodstream can locate the antibodies way faster than taking a COVID test and waiting for the results to come back. This way, after a few minutes of the virus entering his body, the nanotech will notify Bill and his doctor. In reality, the use of nanotech during corona could really benefit everyone. Those who are infected can quarantine themselves and keep everyone else safe. As seen, nanotech comes with many medical benefits, but let's look into its costs. Apart from a one-time fee for implantation, there will be a monthly fee which basically helps fund the maintenance of the nanotech. There will also be extra fees for larger, more urgent treatments. The pricing of nanotechnology can compare to those of health insurances, but an analogy to help you understand better is Wi-Fi costs. There is an installment fee for the router, a fee to keep your Wi-Fi running, and a fee for Wi-Fi goes down and needs to be fixed. The finances for this nanotechnology will be administered in a similar fashion. The one-time installment fee for this tech is around $2,000. The maintenance fee and the urgent fees are different according to your health insurance. For something like this to be put into motion, we would have to start at a small scale. We've already seen nanotechnology tested and used in the past, but to test it with an app will prove beneficial for us in the future. Mice and zebrafish are good choices for testing due to their in-lab benefits. Mice can help us due to their biological similarities with humans, and zebrafish give us a good study group since they produce more offspring. By taking mice and zebrafish who have been diagnosed with certain diseases, we could see how well nanotech cured them. Only after thorough testing on the two species, doctors could start implanting the nanotech into people at a small scale. This whole process should be taken slowly to ensure that when nanotech is finally launched, it will be at its best state. After all this, you should be able to see that our biomedical innovation is completely relevant to the healthcare system in today's day and age. This innovation can help numerous people with their healthcare needs, from basic illnesses like the common cold, to severe illnesses like cancer. The beauty of this innovation is that it is applicable to everyone and will be able to help people every day without them even knowing. Just think, with nanotechnology, the number of surgeries needed will decrease, and along with that, the number of deaths caused by them. No more saying it's too late, or saying, I'm sorry, we can't do anything. There's always a way to solve the problems we face, and the way to solve them in today's world is nanotechnology. Thank, Thank you. you.